Welcome to the celebrated nightly news of Calaveras County. And I'm John, and you might as uh, notice that I'm here sans Sarah because we're going live tonight at 10 p.m. So uh, bear with me because we won't have the the visual feast of Sarah Lunsford, and so you're going to have to put up with uh, John over here. But there was a little bit of stuff going on today. So let's kind of do a... Uh, Oh, kind of a weekend, a little wrap-up. It was a busy weekend. Hopefully show you some clips. We, you know, we brought the screen forward to hope you have a little better uh, um, view of the video and things like that. We hope you had a good weekend. To top it off was the Jousting Fair and also the Ironstone Concourse. Uh, they both had very good events in spite of the weather because they uh, had a little bit of a deluge there. Um, there was also a power outage on uh, Saturday that affected uh, good portions of Angel's Camp and Murphy's. In fact, Ironstone for the concourse, they didn't get their power back on until, oh wow, almost until the event was over. Probably I would say 15 or 20 minutes before the event was over is that's when they actually had their power come back on. So, um, and I guess since our last broadcast, we'll actually start back with, uh, excuse the scrolling here a little bit, um, We'll start back with um, the sports and Friday night. On Friday night, or actually on Friday, because we didn't um, we didn't tape a news show on Friday evening, so this will be our first one of the of the week. And starting off with new, at uh, 1 p.m. on Friday was the groundbreaking for the Angels Camp Bypass, and this is the old Blondie's location or next to it there in the uh, parking lot there. Um, Dignitaries including uh, Lieutenant Governor John Garamendi, most of the uh, area supervisors, um, Caltrans directors, um, very, uh, lots and lots of people. And if you hadn't had a chance to do it, we'll pull up a little clip here of... We'll start off with that and we'll bounce through this stuff. There we go. Here is the uh, Caltrans director. And um, on behalf of all the fine folks at Caltrans, I'd like to welcome you all to uh, to the groundbreaking ceremony of this very wonderful project. This is pretty cool. This has been talked about for almost 50 uh, years. We're gathered to celebrate the groundbreaking of the Angels Camp Bypass. Uh, this is a project that has been uh, on the books and in our minds for a very long time. And I've talked to several people today. Um, that I've wondered whether or not this, this is Kome Ajisi, he's the uh, Caltrans director. Uh, we'll skip forward just a tiny bit through to uh, the, the Lieutenant D Governor's uh, portion of this uh, presentation. Um, I'd like to take this, uh, just one minute to quickly recognize the Calderas Council of Government. Had a little bit of mic issues. Oh, well, we ought to go back home. And uh, that's not really normal in this part of the country. Uh, you really uh, want that Patty's going to say, we really should go down to the current bond act with the money for this. Here, including uh, many of the privileged and uh, this is the Lieutenant Governor uh, uh, John Garamendi they're, they're going to be introducing the now. The um, of the great state of California, Mr. John Garamendi. Here he is. And they had a few mic issues, but the first parts of this. Uh, he had a very nice, a uh, little bit of a lighthearted intro. Whoops. And that's the mic on the, the there from Friday, not from our mic. Okay. Back off. Uh, Comey, thank you very much. And thank you for your leadership at District 10. Uh, over the years, uh, I know that most everybody here, including uh, many of the employees, have had an opportunity to, uh, to work with you. Uh, and you've done a great job in your leadership there. And the audio, he's uh, having a little bit of issues with um, audio to start with. But we wanted to bear with this because he had some really nice comments as getting this underway. And it was nice to have him in the area. Patty and I, Patty's from back there, so uh, we were driving up here today. We said, oh, we had to go back home. And uh, bear with the audio a little bit. This is, it's worth it. He does it. He does a really nice job on this intro here. Let's go back home. As many of you know, we have a ranch on the other side of the county. And uh, this is where I grew up. As I walked in here, they gave me this purple cap. <laughs> Some of you know that uh, where I grew up, you only wear a red cap. <laughs> this couldn't be 
myself to put on. <laughs> old rivalries don't die easily, do they? Uh, but it's, um, you know, the old Calaveras Bret Hart rivalry, which I understand continues to this day, as it should. But the kind of uh, cooperation that led to this project finally... All right, and he goes um, on and on um, a little bit about... Um, um, and very nice talk. It was nice to have him in the area, and he was referring to the Calaveras Bret Hart rivalry. Um, and also, they wanted through most of the um, representatives from the area elected officials. Um, here's Tim McSorley from the COG. He did a nice job. for having you all here helping us celebrate. One other person that I do want to recognize is Mr. George Dondero. Um, George, George is my predecessor. I've actually only been with the Council of Governments for just about a year now, and it's been uh, certainly exciting um, as, we, as we work through the project and seeing it come to fruition. Uh, I'm actually an old construction engineer, so when I get out there and or have the opportunity to have my cup of coffee and get that first... Uh, lung full of diesel fuel uh, exhaust, um, I'm going to be really excited to see it as we continue to progress. But it has been a wonderful effort. The, again, the, uh, the cooperation that we've had, the regional uh, 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 look at the um, transportation needs has just been... I got in politics probably about 1980. And this is Curly Middleton. And he went through most of the, a lot of the elected officials. And they did a great job, and it's really nice to uh, see this project really take off because I think this is something that um, will help our area for, for many years to come. Um, also, that was, that was on Friday afternoon at 1 p.m., and most of uh, we also have some slides up um, where, let's see here, uh, the groundbreaking ceremony, if you want to see some of those, uh, some really nice stuff. And I think this has been planned for... Like I said, like many people had said, it first talked about almost 50 years ago. And Tom Try and Supervisor Tom Tryon's uh, speech, he uh, he referenced that that uh, when he was a young uh, young boy, there were some t um, stakes on the farm that he was that there were reference for a bypass. Um, so that is underway, and that happened on Friday afternoon. So that was um, one of the highlights to really get the um, get the weekend started. The other one was on Friday night. Um, we, want, we went out to uh, Calaveras High for a little bit of their, we caught about the last quarter or so of their football game, and we have a little bit of, for that here. In fact, if you want to watch uh, how Calaveras played, we have about the last, uh, oh wow, probably have about the last quarter, and they actually did really well over series. 35-21 um, was the final score, and it was um, a very well-fought game. And I think the and the buzz is already building for the big game this year. I think uh, this one should be a good one. I think both teams are getting excited for it, and it should be um, should be a big one. Now, for upcoming for this Friday night, we will be uh, this will be the second uh, televised broadcast of the uh, Bret Hart football games. So we're gonna uh, looking forward to that. So they will um, so. Friday night, starting with the JV, we will have uh, we'll be pushing the uh, Bret Hart football games to cable, and we also plan on doing um, and we also plan on doing the big game this year as well. All right, okay. So if you want to watch that a little bit on the PineTree.net, we have about a quarter of the last quarter of the game. Watch the guys play there, and then the score was. 35-21 and a convincing win. Um, also on Saturday, while we're on a little bit of sports, um, Cal I mean, Bret Hart just rolled over in Cena. I mean, it was just, um, I mean, it was just a trouncing of uh, you know, of Encina. Um, they are, in fact, that one was, and the score on that one, oh, it was like 60-something to, um, 60-something to nothing on that one. Um, also, Going, and also this weekend, starting up big, was the, um, on two days, was the Jousting Festival out at uh, Frogtown, where they did a really, um, if you haven't seen any of these things on the 
the big horses rumbling each other at 1500 you know 1500 pound animals we'll show you a little bit a little bit of clip of that a um, little bit of clip of that right now And I like about some of the things on uh, shattering the lances. Now we'll go full screen on this here. All right. And we'll rumble through this. You got to see a couple passes. There they go. And this is the Black Knight. There was a rivalry between the uh, the Black Knights and the White Knights. And we had about 15 minutes of video of that up on uh, the PineTree.net as well, if you want to see that. But it's really quite an event um, where. You can see where these guys going back in time. Um, this was quite, um, and on these spears and the lances on these, you'll see. Let's see. Let's stop it for a second. You may see on the uh, on the lances they use. They put about a foot of balsa wood right on the end of it uh, to help cushion the blows. Because if these guys were going with uh, real wood, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. If these guys were going through, I mean, they could have really caused some damage to each other. Um, again, the jousting festival this last weekend, uh, filled Frogtown. It was a really a fun event. And excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, a little bit of a uh, little bit of sneezing here. Um, that was a really a fun one. And if we have lots of slides there, if you want to go to the PineTree.net, you'll be able to see some costumed um, costume the people that were out there for the weekend and excuse me I gotta sneeze one little tiny let's um, and that was a great thing so the jousting fest out at the out of fairgrounds was a lot of fun and they had very good crowds in spite of the weather so in spite of the weather they had really good crowds and also moving on to uh, Saturday evening this was a fun one this was hoedown for the habitat this is the annual fundraiser for habitat for humanity that was held at Murphy's Park. Now this one, um, it rained. It rained hard on them. It let up a little bit later, uh, but they started off really, um, really wet. And so we'll play a little bit of a video clip of that one for you. And there it is. We'll let this run a little tiny bit. And the chicken, and the chicken was prepared on site by, uh, here they go, county council. So Habitat for Humanity, they got it in. Uh, it was a little bit wet, but they did get it in at Murphy's Park on Saturday evening. Now the big event, the big event for the weekend was added Ironstone. It was the 11th annual Concours d'Elegance, and it was a quite an event. They were a little bit, this was, this is when all the power outage was happening. So for uh, Saturday morning, there was a deluge that really started about 7.30 or so in the morning that really got them going and power actually went out um, and is actually out at Ironstone until uh, the event was basically over. Uh, what we tried to do, for those of you who couldn't make it, is we tried to take a photograph of every entrant in the event. So we have almost 300 slides up on, uh, on the pine tree as a... Um, if you want to see the entrance, and this is also a 4-H fundraiser, but if you go through those, we have 
almost every entrant. I think we may have missed a couple, but here's a beautiful Ferrari Daytona uh, that was one of the winners in its class. Um, and we have, there was about 300 entrants, and we have, we tried to get a shot of every one. So, and also we have the um, award ceremony. We have uh, all the award ceremony, and there were some local news celebrities uh, that were in attendance. Um, Dave and Lois from Channel 3 did some of the introductions, and they were there on hand to introduce the young lady that did the... Um, the Star Spangled Manor. So let's see, excuse the scrolling here a little bit. We'll do a tiny bit of that. And this is really a, and they put on really a nice show out there. And this is Mrs. Couts. And there's Dave and Lois out there as they're doing their introductions. She did a great job on the national anthem. We'll catch just the first couple seconds of her national anthem. We'll show you a couple of the cars. It's worth watching the um, watching it on the site just for uh, just for that. And we'll go forward to a couple of the cars, and they had some really beautiful automobiles. And this is one of the Woodies going through there, and this is where they're uh, coming across the stage at Ironstone. Um, best of Show was won by a Nash Healy from uh, Lodi. Best of Show. For, they just finished the uh, restoration on it at 53. Nash Healy. And here's one of the Cadillacs that's coming through. And also Goldwing here. Beautiful stuff. They did a wonderful show out there. And there were quite a few local winners, so we mean, uh, relatively local. Murphy's, Sonora, and I believe this, is, this man was from Murphy's. All right. So, concourse, jousting festival, hoedown for the habitat. And there was also a uh, very nice function out at um, Irish Vineyards. We'll have some video and stuff up on that as well. Um, Twisted Oak also had some. There was a lot of stuff to do this weekend. And it was, uh, and it, most of the events seemed very well received in spite of the weather because it came down hard. Uh, pass was closed for briefly at the first part of the start of the weekend, opened back up. Uh, they did get some snow for in part of Saturday afternoon up in Bear Valley, and it, but it didn't actually um, stick and close the pass. But um, it was a lot of uh, fun ones. A couple things we need to ch we need to actually do some hard news a little bit. Um, there was three accidents over the weekend, several ones, and there was actually one fatality. And this was a, um, a single vehicle rollover one. And this is one that was, uh, it's, it's very, a uh, very sad one. This is one where it was a 48-year-old Kevin Connell from Valley Springs passed away in an accident on uh, Milton Road. And he was, um, and we'll just read the report here, or the release from the CHP. Mr. Connell was traveling north on Milton Road at an unknown speed. Uh, he allowed his car he allowed his uh, vehicle to leave the roadway, swerved back and forth across the southbound lane, rotated counterclockwise and off the roadway, and overturned onto its roof, coming to rest on top of a barbed wire fence. 
Uh, he was trapped in the driver's seat and succumbed to his injuries. Due to the location of the vehicle in its darkness, it is unknown for how long he was there before somebody noticed. And that's um, pretty sobering that um, you know, nobody you know, it was in a position where people may not have noticed that he was there. Um, this was the 11th fatal collision uh, investigated by the CHP uh, San Andreas in 2007, and it's the 14th fatality so far this year as a result of those just in Calaveras County. So very sobering, and please be careful out there. Also, there was a head-on on Highway 4, I mean on Highway 49, there by, um, oh, it was there by Meekham Ranch Road at 5.30 p.m. on the 22nd. And this is where an 87-year-old man from McCollum Hill was traveling, um, Northbound on Highway 49, allowed his truck to drift onto the southbound lane and collided head on to the vehicle of a 20 year old male from San Andreas. He was life flighted to Modesto with major injuries or thoughts and prayers, you know, go out. So it was, uh, you know, head injuries there and don't know for sure how uh, that one's going to play out. And there was a drunk driving, uh, one drunk driving crash as well. Um, excuse me. Um, well, you know, it got on camera, so a little bit of allergies going. Sorry about that. Um, so some accidents there. Upcoming for tomorrow, Board of Supervisors. Um, they will be back. Oh, also one of the things we forgot this morning, we got an email from a viewer from uh, Jennifer Wren, or Stochip, and she used to own Alchemy there in Murphy's, and she was out walking her dog. Um, and walking your dog, and she saw spotted a mountain lion. So we'll read you her comments here real quick. So and this is, I want to thank her for letting us know and sending this in. I thought some of your readers might want to know of a mountain lion sighting this morning on Mount Davis Road off Crestview and Murphy's. I was out on my daily walk with my dog Chance on Mount Davis Road off of Crestview. Oops, uh, off of Crestview. Um, at the top of Mount Davis Road Hill, we encountered a very large mountain lion. He and my dog stared at one another for about a minute. Then the lion turned and went off the woods without incident. Yes, I was scared, so scared that I or my dog, who was uh, not a, on a leash, thankfully would have, would have been attacked. I took off my sweatshirt, held it above my head, walked slowly around, and ran like Hades after the mountain lion went back into the woods. This road is a popular spot for runners and walkers because of the locale and lack of vehicles. You can bet I will not be watched, so just be careful. Uh, with all the uh, mountain lion sightings, and that was this morning in Murphy's. Um, Board of Supervisors back in session tomorrow. And we'll go to them. We'll go to the agenda for Board of Soups. Give you a little bit of a heads up on um, what's going on there tomorrow. Here we go. And for the agenda for tomorrow... For the Board of Supervisors, um, they will be back in uh, starting at 9 a.m. So the, the public comments were, uh, you know, this is always the fun stuff. You never really know what you're going to get at 9 a.m. for uh, public comments. So if you're ever in San Andreas on a Tuesday morning and you've never attended a meeting, stop by and go in. It's a lot of fun. It's a public forum. Um, sometimes it's more fun than others for the supervisors. But, um, and this one is also one where... Um, they're going to have on the recreational trails grant for the interface trail near Arnold. This is part of the Arnold Rim Trail. We talked to uh, Lonnie Allison on this as they're working up that grant. Different building department issues uh, will be on the agenda for tomorrow. Um, so it should be a good one and we'll be there and we'll also post video of the event uh, later as always. And those, one of the things if you're ever curious on going back on a Board of Supervisors meeting is one of the things we've tried to do on the pinetree.net and we know you can watch them on Channel 9 as well um, as, you know, when they're current. But we have almost every meeting going back for over a year and a half uh, that you can go back and watch and, um, and look at and review if you ever choose to. And so that one is, and that's pretty well it. So we better, let's go on to our weather. Let's look a little bit of how the weather is going to um, come around here a little bit. And here we go, starting to warm back up a little bit. We'll start off with Arnold. 
Overnight tonight, a high of 71 tomorrow, low of 53 tomorrow night, high of 78, low of 54 Wednesday night, a high of 77 on Thursday and on into Friday, we're at 71. So it looks like mid, mid to high 70s in Arnold for the rest of the week. Looks pretty good. Uh, Bear Valley, uh, low of 42, high of 62, high of 68 on Wednesday, high of 65 on Thursday, and on into the weekend, you're looking at a high in the, in the 60s. Murphy's, and 76 tomorrow, 79 on Wednesday, 78 on Thursday, and 70 on Friday. Angels Camp. Angels Camp will be 53 uh, low for tonight, a high of 80 tomorrow, 83 on Wednesday, and 82 on Thursday. So it looks like nice mid 80s. So it looks like we're back warmed up a little bit over the past few days. Uh, no closures or anything like that now. And we thank you very much for, for letting us. Uh, into your home again tonight and do you do some news sarah will be back tomorrow night and we hope you have a good night and hope everything goes well for you oh one of the things we forgot to mention today there was a another ribbon cutting for the chamber of commerce now this one was for the wells fargo the new wells fargo bank which is actually the bank of lodi the bank of lodi is now the uh new wells fargo bank so they have there was a ribbon cutting there for the chamber and this was the first time that a Wells Fargo bank will be back in the county in about a decade. So stop on by, talk to Kathy, Kathy Mossaferro, the um, bank manager there. They did a really nice job. And there was also a painting unveiled today that was done by one of our old high school teachers that was done for the bank. Very, very nice. So we thank you for stopping by, and we hope you have a good evening. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.